Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. We're back here at Walker Ford in Clearwater, Florida. And guess what? We have that one off-road trim that you've been waiting for on this SUV. This is it. New for 2022, a Ford Explorer Timberline. But before we get into this off-road worthy trim on an Explorer, let's talk about what's going on here. The Ford Explorer, it's been in their lineup since 1991, if you could believe that. And yes, over the years, there's been obviously vehicles that have some off-road capability, some Explorers that have some off-road capability, but this takes it to a whole new level, not only on the exterior, but also special touches on the interior. Now, we already brought to you the bigger brother, which is the Ford Expedition Timberline. But what I want to find out is, with this long-standing Explorer, is this the better mid-size three-row off-road worthy SUV to buy, who are we gonna compare it to? Yes, the mighty Jeep Grand Cherokee, and not just the regular Jeep Grand Cherokee, we're talking about the Jeep Grand Cherokee L Overland. So let's go ahead, let's dive into this Timberline, find out what's special about it, and see is it a better vehicle than the Jeep Grand Cherokee? Let's go find out. Right off the bat, the color. I have not seen one in this black metallic. The special color, if you wanna be special, there's a deep cypress green metallic that really looks killer, but this blacked out version is looking like an off-road police interceptor. Now, at the front of the business, you are gonna get some usual touches, but you're also gonna get some special touches unique just to the Timberline. At the front of the business, of course, just like other Explorers, you're gonna get the full LED headlights, LED turn signals, and LED daytime running lamps. Now, working our way down, you see that nice metallic black sparkle. We, of course, have full LED fog lamps, and you'll notice that we have some flat black. The good news is no fake vents, nothing fake on the front of this Explorer. Now, as we come across the front grill, this grill is unique to the, this Explorer Timberline. Now, if you're wondering, well, Joe, it seems like there's these rectangle shapes here that are kind of missing something. There's an optional set of exterior off-road lighting that actually goes into these slots, and you'd be surprised. It really adds extra illumination while you're doing your off-roading at night or when there's a low light level. I like the way they went with the blacked out Ford badge instead of the blue oval. We have the black R oval. You do get a forward facing camera, which is so important on an off-road vehicle so that you could see in front of you. If you're wondering, well, Joe, is this Explorer sitting up any higher than your standard Explorer? Yes, it's about an inch. So you're looking at almost nine inches of ground clearance underneath this Explorer, and you're gonna get full you hear that? That's my knuckles cracking open from the steel skid plates all the way back. The Timberline comes with this deep tangerine trim color, and it's looking good, like I said, with the, with the black metallic, it's popping nicely. You'll also notice this little mountain range. This is the mountain range that's symbolic of where Henry Ford used to spend his summers out in the Colorado Rockies. And of course, we got the required deep tangerine tow hooks to help pull those Jeep Grand Cherokees out of the mud. And I'm liking the nice metallic silver finish because once you get past this, it's actual metal. Now, when we get up onto the hood, standard Explorer hood, and that's not a bad thing. Love the way it's got the deep U indentation. My one zonk is I wish that this one had the optional lights for me to show you. But other than that, it's looking tough from the front. Now, when we come around the bend, we do get special wheels and tires. These are unique to the Timberline trim. So this is an 18 inch wheel. If you look closely, let's see if we can find it. Right here, you got that Mountain Rage logo right on the wheel. Each wheel has it, and that's just a little uh, designator to let you know that this is something special. We have the off-road worthy Bridgestone tires with the shield protection on the sidewall. That's gonna help take a better beating. Now these aren't like the Goodyear 
uh, Wrangler Superior off-road tires. This is something that's a good compromise to get you off-roading, but also give you some nice ride as you're going down the road. If you're wondering, well, what's the size? You're looking at 265 on the width and a meaty 65 series sidewall wrapped around that 18 inch wheel. All four corners receive special suspension shock absorbers and springs. The shock absorbers come right from the police interceptor. So if you see a police interceptor Ford Explorer, you got the same shock absorbers and the special springs give us that extra lift to help give us better ground clearance. Now, of course, we're gonna have four by four. Outback is a limited slip differential, but we'll talk more about that as we get to the rear. Now, coming down the side, I am gonna zonk that we have flat black mirrors. I wish that these were painted. There's no lighting, but the good news is, if you notice, we do get 360 degree cameras. So I guess that's the give and take. You know, life is about compromise. Relationships are about compromise. You got your 360 degree cameras, which I think is gonna be very beneficial when you are off-roading. On the side, you're just gonna get a little bit of gloss black. I'm glad that they didn't go crazy with the tangerine orange. That would make this look like a Halloween special, like the Halloween spirit stores that open up three months before Halloween. I feel like that would be a Halloween spirit store special. So I'm glad they didn't go tangerine orange everywhere. You're gonna get your raised roof rails, they are flat black. I don't mind that because obviously, if you're getting one of these, you're all about the adventure and you'll be able to get your kayaks, your cargo basket, all that stuff up there for your next adventure. Now, one little touch is I like the badging, that special Timberline badge, a little bit of the tangerine, some nice white, and there's those Rocky Mountains where Henry Ford used to go fishing. He would spend his days whittling wood into shapes of different cars and thinking about just how great the assembly line is. That's some of the things that he would do. Now coming towards the rear, I do like the way it's got a nice low roof spoiler. You got your aero extensions to help channel the air and, and everything being black, it almost looks like one solid piece of glass, which is kind of cool. Now when we get to the back, you got your four wheel drive badge, of course, with that re special rear diff. We do have LED taillights but not LED turn singles. Let me know if that should be a zonk. Put it in the comment section. This wiper would be perfect right underneath here. Get rid of that. I do like the way they did the black Ford badge. You got your Explorer name stamped in there. And then to wrap it off, we do get another Timberline badge. So they didn't go too crazy with the Timberline badges, just enough. And then as we work our way down, so smart that there's no exhaust showing whatsoever. So we don't have to worry about fake exhaust. We don't have to worry about exhausts that are blocked off and only come out there, down the bottom. It's all tucked underneath. You're gonna get your full tow capability because yes, you could go off-roading, but you could also tow with your Timberline Explorer. But why don't we pop the hood and see if there's any surprises for us with this Timberline. All right, guys, we got the hood open. You do have a prop rod. I am gonna zonk that. It would be nice to have the hydraulic hood truss. Now, underneath the hood of a Jeep Grand Cherokee L, you get your choice of a V6, you get your choice of a V8. Not the case on the Explore Timberline, and I think that this has to be probably the biggest zonk of the vehicle. And it's funny because, and ironic, because it's all about the engine being too small, not being too big. What do we have deep down in this area? And it's crazy because you can see just how much room is underneath the hood of an Explore. We got the 2.3 liter EcoBoost. What is that? It's an inline four turbocharged engine, 300 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque. I would have liked to have seen the 2.7 liter V6 EcoBoost engine. It is mated to a 10-speed automatic, zero to 60 in about six seconds. Top speed is governed to 113 miles an hour. MPGs, 19 in the city, 22 on the highway. The vehicle weighs 4,565 pounds and the vi uh, vehicle can tow 5,300 pounds, 5,300 pounds of towing capacity. But one of those things that when you're comparing it to the Jeep Grand Cherokee, you got the bigger engine options and you have options. You can't even call up Henry Ford the 12th and request a bigger engine this is what it comes with. But while we go ahead, let's get to the interior and see what special things are in this Explorer.
All right, guys, we're inside this 2022 Ford Explorer Timberline, the first time ever that there is an off-road specific trim for the Explorer. And I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, it seems that everybody and their mother is doing these uh, off-road special trims. I'm a true off-roader. I need something rugged, rugged. I know what Jeep stands for with their Grand Cherokees, especially the Grand Cherokee L, but I'm very close, I'm very curious, and I'm very close to pulling the trigger on one of these Explorer Timberlines. How much is it though? So this trim, if you were to get an Explorer XLT and spec it out as close as you could to this trim, it would cost you an additional $2,400. So what does that mean at the end of the day? MSRP, $47,000. $790. Let's see how it stacks up to the Jeep, to the door panels. What I do like is you're getting a nice touch of Timberline trim. You'll notice the deep cypress green color interior on the door panel and that deep tangerine color really separates it from other explorers. The metallic silver looks fine. Door pocket is a good size. You could easily get an oversized turkey leg from the Renaissance Festival in there, and a big old bottle of Barks root beer. Going from the door panel to the dash, this is where I like it because it's different, but I don't love it. So soft touch material, just like any other Explorer. This painted silver trim is just not working for me. It looks like somebody literally just spray painted it with a rattle can of silver paint. So I am gonna zonk that. It would be nice to have a little bit different finish something maybe dark wood, maybe something with the orange. I don't know what, but this needs to be changed. When you go Timberline, not only are you getting the small engine, you're getting the smaller infotainment system. Eight inch infotainment system. For me, eight inches is fine. I don't need a 72 inch screen. I could watch TV at home, but I know some people out there, let me know how you feel about it. Is this enough or would you want the vertical setup rather than the horizontal small screen? You do get navigation, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It is the older operating software, but what's great about it is that it's just very simple to use, especially when you're gonna go into your certain apps or your certain settings, especially the driver assistant stuff. Sometimes you gotta have like a decoder ring from a box of Captain Crunch cereal to figure out how to shut off lane keep assist and things like that. Very easy to do on the Explorer. So that's good news. They do give you this nice little Twinkie tray here. You could easily put, I would say two, just put two or you're going to bust cream all over yourself. You do get a little bit more silver, not my favorite. You could go to forward facing camera and there we are looking out the front. You got your 360. While we're here, let me just go ahead and throw it into reverse. There's reverse. So it is nice to have the 360, the forward facing, and obviously the backup camera. You do have three stages of heated seats, no ventilated seats, and you do get a heated steering wheel. You got your dual climate control, which is a nice touch. The silver, it's better than gloss black. I just don't know how it's gonna wear over time. So that will be the big question, but open up door number one, what do we got? You got a 12 volt deep down inside, you got a USB-C and a USB-A, and you have this little tray that you could actually keep all your polished stones. So when you're out camping, when you're out off-roading, and you collect your little rocks and you put them in your polishing tumbler, you could keep the collection of rocks in here. I'd say you could easily keep 75 rocks. Or maybe, you know, you were, you were around in the 1970s, you bought yourself a pet rock, you made that guy a millionaire who came up with the pet rock, you could keep your pet rock in there. So to each their own, that's what I always say. Two cup holders, we do get a nice fig Newton bar holder here. So if you have a Fig Newton uh, cookie bar, you could stack that right here. We got two cup holders. On the side, you got a little tray. I don't, I'm not gonna wanna put a banana in there. Maybe some fruit leathers. You could put some, slide some fruit leathers in there. That's gonna go ahead and give you that nice choice of different things, especially if somebody already eats the turkey leg. You might still be hungry. Key fob, it's got the blue oval on it. It's a nice key fob. I mean. Nothing wrong with it. It would have been nice to, it's got remote start. It would have been nice if it had Timberline on it. That would have been the perfect touch. But we got a 10 speed automatic with the rotary dial. You got your drive modes. I'll show you more of that when you come to the business end. Nice, soft. You do have a cell phone holder, but it's not a wireless charger. 
This should have a wireless charger for $47,000. Open it up, what do we got? We got a nice little felt line tray here, so when you're collecting your canary yellow diamonds, you could go ahead and put those there. Got another 12 volt, and you got enough room in there, I would say, for six PB&J sandwiches on the super thick bread, and go chunky. Don't be a wuss with the creamy stuff. Go chunky peanut butter, that's my fave. Seats, the cypress green with the orange stitching. There's that Timberline badge I wanted to see. I do like the cloth here. Looks very classy. You do have electric assist for the passenger, electric assist for the driver. I'm six feet tall, I have not shrunk yet. Fingers crossed that will not happen, but I got plenty of room, no sunroof. Not even a standard sunroof, let alone a panoramic sunroof. Let me know how you feel about that, but remember, for the price point, this is kinda coming in definitely lower than a Jeep Grand Cherokee L, but why don't you come over to the business end, I wanna show you behind the wheel of this Timberland. All right guys, now what's great about this Explorer is that remember, with the reshaped front end, you're gonna have a better approach angle and departure angle. You do get your seat controls that are easy to get to, no special like sill plate, it just says Explorer in plastic, so I really wasn't even gonna point it out, but I guess I should, because that should say Timberline with a nice aluminum trim on the sill. Steering wheel though, they did a great job on the wheel itself. I'm gonna cover this part. So I like the leather, I like the orange stitching, that tangerine stitching. Horn button has gotta go. This, this to me feels rental car. I don't know why. And Lori and I have been talking more and more about this silver, not my favorite. I wish they would have went a different direction. You do have paddles on the back of the steering wheel to go up and down the 10 speed automatic. And this is a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And lo and behold, you don't get the larger digital dash. You have the seven inch digital display, tons of readouts with your analog tack, analog speedometer. What I do like though, is when you go into the different modes, you get the cool graphics, just like Gran Turismo or Gran Turismo Off-Road. You got Sport, you got Eco. I mean, you got Slippery when wet, the Bon Jovi mode, the Rocky mode, it's Christmas. You got every mode imaginable with this setup, and that's gonna special tune the 4x4 system. But why don't we go ahead, let's get into the mid-row and see if your passengers are gonna be nice and cozy while you're crushing the rocks in this time. All right, guys, mid-row time. You do get more of the Cypress Green for your mid-row passengers. And I don't know if you remember those Wendy's commercials in the past when it was this lady who would go, where's the beef? Here's the beef. They give you a nice beefy armrest. This is what I'm talking about. In every freaking review that we do on Radies Rides, this is how you do a proper captain's chair armrest because it's beefy enough for all kinds of arms, not just the people with the small toothpick arms. You do get all the nice stitching, just like up front. Fold it up, what do we got? Backs of the seats, you're getting all the nice material, super soft, good size pocket. You could easily put a mirror and a back scratcher in there. And you know what? When your kids get bored and they don't have anybody to talk to, tell them to talk to themselves with the mirror because if you can't love yourself, you can't love anybody else. That's a little for me to them. Little command center here. We do get rear AC controls, which are nice, heated seats, and plenty of connectivity. USB-C, USB-A, 12 volt. If you're wondering what the heck is this, this is where you could put your family jewels one jewel on each side, or drinks, whatever you prefer. It's just, it's gonna be a small drink because this little piece of fabric is only gonna stretch, or maybe just a, a small set of family jewels. Maybe you got the smallest set, I'm not sure. I have plenty of room over here, and that's the great news is because I need the room. Nice lighting seats. If you're wondering, well, where are the AC vents? They are up in the ceiling in the headliner. I don't mind it too much because I like it on the side rather than right here above my head, so that's the good news. But seats also recline. Now we're not gonna get into the third row, but I'm gonna show you the third row. If you wanna see more of an Explorer, we got plenty Explorer reviews on Rady's Rides. But I'm gonna go ahead and flip this up. I'm gonna move it right out of the way. The thing that is the Zonk. Now you do get Cypress Green, but it's not the same seat material. Wouldn't it be nice to have three rows of matching seats? Why does that have to look like it was an aftermarket idea. Another thing I'm not digging is that there's no USB. No USB-C, no USB-A, not even a USB XYZ, WRX, STUV, whatever. There's no connectivity back there. 
But why don't we go ahead, let's get into the cargo area and see what we could haul in our Explorer Timberland. All right, guys, cargo area time. Now, it's real simple. You just look for the arrow, hit the button right underneath the arrow. Nice electric assist. Let's see how it stacks up to the Jeep Grand Cherokee L. We left the third row up because I wanted you to see how much room there is. And there's plenty of room. You actually have 18 cubic feet of space with the third row up. You fold the third row down, which is what we're gonna do. That's gonna give you almost 48 cubic feet of space. And then if you fold down the mid row, that's gonna give you 88 cubic feet of space, which is a ton. Remember, this is a real wheel drive platform, just like the Jeep Grand Cherokee L. Let me show you some of the touches. First of all, Ford did a great job engineering storage space for the Twinkies. You could easily get 18 boxes of Twinkies in here, and it makes sense, 18 cubic feet, 18 boxes of Twinkies. You could take this cargo lid, flip it over, and now you got a hard surface without the carpet. You could actually fillet fish on this. Get your grouper, get your salmon, whatever you caught, fillet it on there, and you're not gonna have to worry about dirtying up the carpet and then you just flip it back over. Nobody's the wiser. Here's another nice, simple thing. No buttons to push. You're just gonna pull the tabs and let them drop. Pull, and then let it drop. That's gonna give you a nice flat floor. You can see what your third row passengers are working with. No USBs, like I said. I think that that's an issue, that there should be a USB back here for both rear seat passengers. But you do have a 12 volt, which is a nice touch for the camping, for the tailgating. And then of course, to pull the seats back up, it's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. This is why I don't like the buttons because it makes life so simple doing it this way. But you know what? Another thing that we need to find out how easy it is, is on throttle. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go ahead and take this Explorer Timberline for a little spin. All right, guys, we're in the 2022 Explorer Timberline. Leave and Walker Ford. I do have it in sport mode. Remember, we have that rear wheel drive platform with the 4x4 setup, specifically tuned for a little bit more off road duty. But remember, this is not a rock crawler. So don't go out to Mo Moab or uh, Hell's Revenge and try to do some rock crawling with the Jeep Wranglers and the Broncos because that's not going to work with this Explorer. What this Timberline trim is all about is getting you to those paths of resistance, maybe where you wouldn't be able to take your normal Explorer because of how ripped up the gravel or sand or ruts are. That's where this comes into play. And like I said, I think if you're looking for the touches, but you don't need to spend $65,000 like on a Jeep Grand Cherokee L, this might be the three row off-road worthy SUV for you and your family's needs. What's great about this Explorer is that obviously you're still gonna do most of your driving on the, the asphalt jungle. And I could see a lot of these cruising around my local mall very easily. But that's the thing is, is that they, they, like I mentioned earlier, they made a compromise and they made it to where you're gonna be comfortable driving it on the street. The good news about the Bridgestone off-road tires, they don't produce too much extra road noise with the off-road tread pattern compared to say a Goodyear Wrangler off-road tire that you would find on a Jeep Wrangler or a Ford Bronco. Now getting to everything is well within reach, just like any other Explorer. And if you want to see a more in-depth review of all the little odds and ends on the interior, like I said, I'll leave a link to one of my other Explorer videos, but I don't know about you. I'm dying to go on throttle here. If you're ready, I'm ready. On throttle, here we go. Nice turn in. Obviously, they reworked the suspension for off-road duty, but you are getting those police interceptor SUV shock absorbers, all four corners with the special springs. And I'm telling you, this thing is very smooth, very comfy. The noise that you're hearing is not the actual EcoBoost. That is noise that is being pumped in through the speakers. Not too sure how I feel about that. Let me know what you think in the comment section uh, about if you don't mind that extra noise. But I do like the way the Explorer drives because ever since they switched back 
to a real wheel drive platform, it handles really, really well. Hot throttle, 10 speed drops down and we're off. Into this left hand bend, nice and smooth. Rolling on throttle. It just, it would be really nice for this to at least have the 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6. Or at least the option to put it underneath the hood. I don't like the way I'm stuck with what Ford wants to put underneath the hood, which is the smaller 2.3 inline four. But you're gonna have plenty of comfortable seating for everybody. I do like the seats. They do a great job, especially for somebody who's taller with longer legs like myself. The seats do feel super comfy. I love the steering wheel, except for the horn button. The horn button just seems very, very rental car-esque. So I wish that whoever is the designer for the horn buttons at Ford to up the game, up their game, and uh, get a nicer looking Ford horn button. It's just, the, it's just the little things that all add up to the big picture. But nice smooth shifting transmission. It seems to have plenty of power. I just would like a little bit more. I mean, you got enough power to get out of your own way with a zero to 60 of six seconds, but I would like a little bit more, um, especially if you need it. It's nice to, to have it. But hopefully this has been a good over, overall view, review of what the Explorer Timberline trim is all about. We're gonna get back to Walker Ford and wrap this one up. But before we do, let's go through this little section here. Back out onto the highway. I am impressed with the sound quality. I mean, the thickness of the glass, the side glass and the sound ending, I'm actually quite impressed with how quiet it is for the most part in the cabin. I just wish there was some type of sunroof or panoramic sunroof that came at this price point. But let's go ahead. We need to get back to Walker Ford and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a second. All right, guys, it's been another fun Ford filled day here at Walker Ford. Definitely gonna thank Frank Walker, Weston Walker, Tracy, Mark, Austin, the whole crew getting us access to their first Explore Timberline. Let me know what you think. Has Ford done enough to make this an off-roady, uh, off-worthy and roady kind of SUV, or is the Jeep Grand Cherokee L still the one to get if you want to do three-row SUV off-roading? Put it in that comment section, but if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. We got to give it up to the off-road worthiness muscle of Lori working that camera. She'll do it on-road, off-road, and everything in between, even in the mountains. That's how dedicated she is. Thank you, Lori, for your hard work. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.